Hello everyone, this video is an introduction to how to do a harmonic analysis. Now before we figure out how to do a harmonic analysis, we first need to know what one is. So a harmonic analysis consists of Roman numerals and inversion symbols that identify the chord above it and how it relates to the chords around it. So what this means is that while you do need to identify the chord in relation to its key area, you also need to think about the relation it has to the chord before it and after it. It needs to work as a harmonic progression as well. So what are some of the challenges of doing a harmonic analysis? Well, secondary dominance, or any kind of chord that isn't a part of the diatonic scale, can prove to be somewhat difficult because they don't necessarily have Roman numerals that correspond to what scale degree number your, the root of the chord has. So for instance, if it's a 5 of 5, even though the scale degree, a number of the root is 2 is the second scale degree, you write 5 of 5 and not a major 2 chord. So that's something to keep your eyes out for. Now the second challenge are non-chord tones. They, while are easily orally identified, orally identified, they're a little bit trickier to identify by sight, and that's something you need to be able to do in order to do a harmonic analysis. You need to be able to sort out which chord tones, or which notes are actually chord tones and which aren't. The next challenge is the variability of dominance and predominance, and in general, any kind of relationship that a chord can have to others. Um, very rarely are there chords that have one kind of relationship. Um, there are many that can have many different functions. So, for instance, in dominance, there are three chords that can fulfill this role. There are five chords, there are seven chords, and then there are diminished two chords. In predominance, there are two chords and there are four chords. So if you see, like, a four chord going to, to a diminished two, it can look really weird, but what it really is is a predominant going to a dominant. So keeping that in mind will help ease a few headaches where it's like, this is what it seems to be, but it doesn't make sense. Well, it actually turns out that it normally does. So here's how to identify, how, here's how to do a harmonic analysis. Uh, the process is to uh, first identify the notes in the chord. So this is where the non-chord tones come in. You exclude those and you only look at the notes that you perceive to be chord tones. You then stack them in thirds. Um, and then you take the lowest of those notes, which is the root, so you identify what note the root is, you find what scale degree number the root is, and then you identify the quality of the chord, then you add the Roman numeral. If it has an accidental, think about this, because if it has an accidental, that means it's probably a secondary dominant or some other chord that doesn't follow the normal rule of scale degree number equals Roman numeral number then determine which part of the chord is in the bass and write the proper inversion symbol based on that. So if we're in F major and we see a chord that has a D, F, and A in it. Well it has an F in the bass, an A in the tenor, and then a D in both the alto and soprano. Well, then we need to stack those notes into thirds. So that would give us a D, F, and an A because those are all in various thirds. Then we know that the root is D, because it's the lowest note um, in that stacking of thirds. Then we find what scale degree number the root is. So D in F major is the sixth scale degree. Um, then we identify the quality of the chord. Well, D to F is a minor third, and F to A is a major third, so it's a minor chord. Then we add the Roman numeral. Since it's the sixth scale degree and is minor, we write a lowercase six. And then we determine which part of the chord is in the bass. If the F is in the bass, then that means that it's in first inversion, which means we put a 6. So for that chord, we put a 6-6. Six, six. Um, now, if you get stuck, it's very important to think of the chord chart, because that's what's going to help you out. So the chord chart meaning the various relationships that each chord has. So if you're ever stuck and you know where you are or where you're going, then it's helpful to figure out what chord you're looking at. So if you have a 1, and then you have a fi and then you have a chord you don't know, and then you have a 5, most likely before that 5 and after that 1 comes a predominant. So give those a strong thought again. Think about those. 
Um, so that's how to do a harmonic analysis if you'd like to look at some examples.